but he said, I am he. I, am he. I need to tell you something. When you come to God and you ask God to change your life, change your mind, because everything that happens with your body first must be approved of by your mind. Yes, sir. It must be approved of. Now, listen. When people come to church and accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you're always going to have some disciples, which means followers of Christ, that's always going to have something negative to say because they have forgotten yes, sir. where God brought them from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They've forgotten. Yes, sir. Then they want to look at you and find him dirty at your door. Next, your neighbors. They're going to check you out your past. When people come to you talking about what you used to be and what they know about your past, yes, sir. you let them know and don't run from it, don't hide from it. I've had preachers tell me before, Pastor, I need to get my record expunged because I've been locked up. And churches want to know, uh, they, they want to think I've been a good preacher, a good guy all my life. But I've been, a, I've been locked up. See? Now, one of the things that happens is this. You need to know that people will check your past. Yes, but when they do check your past, don't be held captive. Take those handcuffs off you. And say, you just reminded me. You just reminded me of how far God brought me from. Yeah. Say, I want to stop and applaud. I want to applaud. That'll mess their head up. Say, I want to thank you. Well, so when they say to you, well, this one used to be a, this one used to be a, this one used to be a, you say, oh, I want to thank you. You stop, raise your hands and say, Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Once I was, yeah. but now, yeah. Yeah. any man in Christ yeah. is a brand new creature. Yeah. Say yes! Yeah. Say yes! Yeah. Say yes! Yeah. Yeah. Put your hands together and praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah! said, yeah, I'm the one. So therefore, in the 10th verse said they unto him, how were his eyes open? Now they want to check out how you got changed. See how nosy folks can be? There's some folk with nose trouble up in here today. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. He answered and said, a man that's called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. I went and washed and I received sight. I received sight. Now, they said unto him, where is this man? You see how they are? Not only do they not believe what you say, they got to check out the credibility of the person who helped you. That's nose trouble. nose trouble. Got nose trouble. Yep. Now, they said unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought him to the Pharisees, him that before time was blind. Yep. Now you got the Pharisees. And they're waiting to deal with Pharisees. He said, they are fair. I see. <laughs> Y'all folks are fair. I see. Yeah, yeah. Pharisee. Yeah. All right. And the Pharisees can't see anything wrong they are doing. Yeah. They can only see what you are doing. Yeah. 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 And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay. Now we're going to get technical. Now we're going to get legal on you. It was Jesus that made the clay on the Sabbath day. And the word says that you are not to do anything on the Sabbath day. That was God's word. Don't do anything on the Sabbath day. But let me tell you who Jesus is. Jesus is a revolutionary. 
Jesus, you know, we sometimes we paint him as some kind of a little wimp, you know, like, oh, he got defeated and he hanging on the cross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he was a revolutionary. Yeah. Well, now, I had said that, you know, he had a you know, great big gun and he wore, you know, a, a, a tam and on his head and he had a lot of bullets across his chest. And he had some kind of a heavy beat song, you know. Oomba, ya, ya, oomba, ya. You know, they say, oh, yeah, I'm going to follow that guy. No, no, but Jesus was not like that. Jesus is a liberator. He goes into dangerous situations, and he will set you free. He will snatch the handcuffs of, of everything that you got hooked on. He will snatch the handcuffs off you and lead you out of that situation. That's who Jesus is. So he took God's word and he said, yes, on the Sabbath day, I made clay. I can do it because I'm the one that made the dirt in the first place. Some people get problems with that. I thought that was the father that did that. It was the father. But when the father did it, the son did it too. The Holy Ghost was right there presiding and taking notes. I wish I had somebody. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the one who made the dust and the dirt in the first place. He said, I got a, I got authority to do something. He reached out, he did it, made any spat, anointed him with. Now you see, got some folks right now, they know we'll get healed. If they had if Jesus had to come in here right now and spit in his hand and wipe it on your condition. You'd be hollering, ooh, I don't know. Now that's weird. Come on, that's what they say when uh, we come at them with some oil, holy oil. Right. We're going to put some holy oil. I don't want you to, but can't you just heal me from over there? Throw it like a ball. Throw it like a ball. Yeah. Then it says, again, the Pharisees also ask him, again, how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I see Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. See, right away, they're going to check, check you out and determine whether or not you are uh, of God or not. Right, right. You're not of God. How do you mean I'm not of God? Well, if you were of God, uh, you'd be wearing certain clothes. If you were of God, yeah. Yeah. oh, I'm getting ready to get in somebody's business. <laughs> you'd be wearing certain clothes. We've got people that come from everywhere, from all walks of life on Sunday. We've got people that come from geographic, different geographic locations. We've got a lot of situations when people come in, different cultures. Even in our own subculture, we have different cultures. We have strata and then we have substrata. We have divisions and then we have subdivisions. I need you to know that just because you came out the same house, and, and that another person came out with the school with you that lived about three, four streets over, they may have come from a different culture because of their parents right. or their grandparents. Right. Amen. Now, everybody did not eat ham. Right. Everybody didn't eat ham. Right. And everybody didn't eat pig feet. Right. Don't you think they did? Right. And anybody that did eat pig feet, I want you to I have the ushers here, write their names down. Because <laughs> we're going to show y'all what to do with them people. <laughs> I forgot what I was preaching. But... <laughs> so when you come to church, just because you dress differently than somebody else, that doesn't mean that you're not of God. That's right. That's right. Just because you're now, wait a minute, I got to say something here. I got to say something. When you come to church, sisters, please, you got to understand a man's mind. A man's mind is made from God. From the early years of his existence, his mind is made to be attracted to what is beautiful and feminine. He's attracted. Right away. Right away. He don't even, he don't know no name or nothing. He just know, woo. And I mean, 
need to tell you. I need to tell you. I need to tell you. The first look is free. The first look, that's what God designed to look. But now the second look, you messed up. The second look, you messed up. He just look one time and then turn away. He start with that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You got to understand, please don't come to church and lead other people in their minds toward the devil's thinking. You know, when you come in here, you ain't got to put no sign on, flashing sign. You ain't got to put something on talking about I'm hot and sexy. You ain't got to do that. This is not the nightclub. This is not the nightclub. You don't have to come in here with a quilt on either. But this is not the nightclub. You need to know my job is to help get me into heaven, and my job is to help get you into heaven. And in your mind ought to be saying, I'm not going to dress so provocative that I'm going to lead some folks to hell up in heaven. That's right. That's why the ushers ought to have. You know, we got to get plenty of the little bit of bottles of water. Because sometimes even the first look will make a man's throat get dry. Amen. Amen. But the first look is free. But the second look is what messes you up. That'll mess you up. Now let me, I need to hear it. I need to hear it. This man is not of God because he keeps not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? See how somebody, wanna, they want to spot your life. They want to spot your life. They'll get up and testify, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, got a mind to run on. I'm saved. I'm, 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 I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, that. And you can't nobody spot my life. In other words, uh, ain't nothing you can say about me. That's not a testimony. That's called braggadocia. You just up bragging. Now when the Lord has forgiven you, if you really meant it, he takes your sins and puts them behind him. One little boy said, if God forgives us of our sins, if we really meant it, and we were sorry we did it, and we said, God, what? take our sins and do what you said. Throw them into the sea of forgetfulness. Put them behind you. Another little boy said, well, he was talking to his daddy. He said, Daddy, I heard the preacher say God puts his sins behind him. He said, well, what if God turns around? <laughs> what if he turns around? He said, don't worry about it. He said, because when God turns around, the sins are still behind him. Amen. <laughs> the sins are still behind him. Why did it get dark on the day Jesus died? Because of sin. God cannot look upon sin, so he turned his face away. Now, I'm talking about the Father turned his face away. That's why it got dark. His son was hanging on the cross on a tree, an ugly, bloody tree. Now, let me hurry. I got to get through this. I got to. Hurry. He said, this man is not of God. How can a man that's a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Let me, I got to say something here. I've had people to say, even to me, they say, uh, Staples, I've heard that people have come to your services and they have been blessed, that people have been healed with the laying on of hand, the anointing of oil, People have been healed. They come in one way and left another way. How is it that they can do this? Nothing but God. Amen. It ain't me, it's God. Amen. Some people will say, 
well, if God is in the healing business, why are you still wearing glasses? <laughs> Devil's full of trickery. Yeah. Listen to me now. Don't leave. <laughs> See, on TV, they put a commercial right there. <laughs> Don't leave. Listen. Right up here, it says in the third verse, chapter 9, St. John. Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest yes, sir. in him. God will allow some things to continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just to see if you'll keep on serving him. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Anybody will serve him. Yeah. As long as you got gravy on your pork chops. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. As long as you still got a good income. As long as you still got good health and strength. As long as your mind is still going good. And your surroundings are all beautiful. And when you lose that, some people will walk away from God. They only stay for the blessing. But when you got a made up mind. And you say, God, I'm going to serve you no matter what. God will get the glory. God gets all the glory. I think that's what every man is looking for in a wife. He's looking for somebody that will stick with him. When things are going well and when things are not so well. He's looking for somebody that will stick with him. And not just riding a gravy train. Just because you're getting your check. Why did you get your check cut off? You're going to get divorced the next week? You know what that makes you? Something worse than a hypocrite. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me move on to the next verse. <laughs> you see, when, when something happens to you, God wants a testimony from you. I heard it this morning when it says, if God had not delivered me, I could never tell somebody that he is a deliverer. If God had never picked me up out of the muck and the mire of life and turned my life around, I'd never know what he could do. And I could never tell anybody convincingly that he can do that for you too. See, if God had not healed me, yes, sir. Yes, hallelujah, yes, sir. then I would never be able to convince another man or woman, boy or girl, that God is a doctor yes, above sir. every doctor. Yes, sir. Trust in the Lord. Yes, sir. But when you've been through it yourself, you got a testimony. Yes, sir. You got a testimony. Yes, sir. Let me finish. Say, there was division among them because... Some were beginning to believe and some were not. They said to the blind man, again, look at the word again, say again. again. What sayest thou of him? What do you think about him? That he has opened your eyes. See, you see how he is, the devil don't go away. You, you push him out of one door, he go around the house and come back in another. You put him out of that door, he go back around the house, climb through the bedroom and he keeps coming at you because he's trying to turn you down. So what sayest thou of him that he's opened your eyes? The man said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. Now listen, they asked this man all these questions and they still don't believe. Sometimes you can't give enough to people that want you to give. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Even in a relationship, sometimes it's a giver in the relationship and a taker. And the giver is going to try to give and give and give and give to make the other person happy. The other person is just going to take and take and take and take. And they'll never be able to get enough. So I gave you all the blood in my right and left arm, but now I want the blood in the right arm too. 
I'm trying to talk to somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight. 19th verse, and they asked him, saying, is this your son? Now they're asking the parents, look, is this your son? They know it's the man's son. Is this your son? Whom say you? Whom do you say was born blind? How then do, does he now see? What you think about it? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son. And that he was born blind. All right? Got that covered. But by what means he now seen, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. Yeah. He shall speak for himself. Yeah. These words spoke his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he would be put out of the church, out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man. That was blind. You see, they're relentless. They're relentless. How much, I mean, how much skin do y'all you gonna take off my back? How much skin are you gonna how much more are you gonna require of me? Amen. Then again called they the man that was blind, said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. <laughs> see the hypo hypocrite folks. Just hypocrisy. Now they won't look. Would you listen to this? Again, they called the man and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man's a sinner. You've got, you've got a difference right there, a dichotomy right there. They talk about give God the praise, but we know you a sinner. Can't you see them coming down the aisle, coming to Jesus to give their heart? And the church going, Oh, just give God the praise. Oh, give God the praise. I surely do wish that this person had worn a three-piece suit, however. <laughs> What's more important? The man or the suit? The man. You know, then somebody else comes down. And I got to say this to y'all. Oh, Lord, I know I'm going past my time. <laughs> Sometimes it comes. Over here at this church, we tell you, come to God. Come to Jesus just as you are. Come to Jesus just as you are. Some folk didn't go home after Saturday night. Some folks stayed out working all night, if you know what I'm talking about. I got a mixed congregation up in here. Some folks stayed out all night long working. I ain't talking about at McDonald's and I ain't talking about at Walmart. Some folk came to church right from work and their clothes look like it. So if they look like that, don't you come in here talking about, mm, that dress show is a little tight, ain't it? Sure it is. They were clothes. I want you to know that you need to stop this hypocrisy. Either you want them or you don't. Some churches that are out beyond us uh, in America somewhere will give a twofold message. We want you, but we don't want you like that. I need to tell you, Mount Zion family says, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. God loves you. He loves you just like you are. But he loves you so much that he does not want you to stay the way you are. He wants you to conform yourself unto him. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Change your mind, and you'll change your walk. Change your heart, and you'll change your talk. Change your steps. And you'll change your attitude. Somebody say, yeah. yeah.